everyone, it's Don from Crux Terminatus with the final Stormhammer. This is part 4, the painting and weathering. As you know, the customer was a bit struggling with uh, camouflage, so I went for a sombre grey, um, and then I went for a lighter grey and a almost white uh, wolf grey to, uh, to give it sort of urban, snowy camouflage. So you'll just see me putting some really bold stripes on it. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a, a brave thing to start doing this, but trust me, go for it you can't get it wrong uh, and if you if you do get it wrong so what you can touch it up later on it's absolutely fine so just make sure all your stripes kind of are, are kind of logical and the uh, the match up sides and the top because that would be a bit of a bit of a disaster if they didn't but there you go so i put on this sort of dark gray and then I, what i do is i highlight it with some white stripes uh, to sort of uh, give it a, a bit of a contrast. I first of all do it only at the front and then you'll see I go back and then I actually do it on the back side of the stripes as well. So ultimately at this point in time I was thinking wow this looks uh, this looks pretty awesome so um, quite liking this build. Again it's all about uh, a bit of confidence with your airbrush um, and you know my journey has been one of, of trepidation and fear but you know what have fun with it. I actually really enjoyed this build uh, and paint so um, I'm using this sort of white to give it that sort of wintry urban camouflage type uh, effect uh, and once it gets all weathered up it, it does look pretty decent. So I covered it with uh, some gloss varnish and this is me making uh, an oil wash and I'm going to use um, the Windsor Newton Van Dyke uh, Brown. Just a, a little uh, splodge of that in there, that's a very technical term, splodge. And um, it's basically a case of painting all the rivets, and there are many, many thousands of rivets on <laughs> this this tank, as bane blades and everything else of that ilk. Um, and then basically what I was doing was running up and down all the, the rivet lines. And uh, a little zoom in here so just to show you, uh, you know, what it, what it kind of looks like uh, when you're doing it. Again, at this stage, it, it kind of looks a bit odd. It's because you haven't done any of the rest of the weathering, but, but trust me, uh, this makes the details pop really uh, quite dramatically um, and when I took some test shots uh, test photographs after this stage I was almost tempted just to leave it because I was thinking wow that looks really really decent uh, and I remember seeing you know people's work in the sort of uh, Imperial Armour Masterclass book thinking wow I wonder how they did that bottom line that's how they did it so if you want to do it then crack on a little bit of um, white spirit and um, uh, oil paint over some gloss varnish and you can get that effect. I was going heavily on the wheels there because obviously the wheels are going to get filthy and dirty uh, more than anywhere else on the tank, but even under, underneath uh, the side sponsons. And uh, this uh, streaking effects, um, if you've never used this before, you do have to be quite quite brave with this. Uh, but the good news is if you've got a varnish underneath, if you make a mistake you can uh, either rub it off with your fingers uh, or use the pull down technique to, to actually get this sort of streak. So I was doing half with the brush and half with my fingers or if my fingers were too fat in that case uh, a little cotton bud just does the, the trick, just the thing. Uh, again these are the little things that just make such a big difference. So that you'll see uh, lots of the rivets, um, they are trying to follow a, a sort of standard pattern where the water would kind of run down um, if it had been sort of left out in the rain. So that's me just showing you some of the, the sort of weathering that's gone on there. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to get onto the weathering powders in just a wee second as well. So um, sponge chipping for um, just where the bits where the, the metal would be you know, worn away. Uh, again, there are far better ways of, of doing this, I'm sure. Um, but um, that's, that's how I do it. Uh, and so this is the weathering powder, it was a, an AK one I was using there and just my big uh, flat brush to, to give it that sort of dusty, sandy, uh, sorry wrong, dusty um, uh, look and, f and feel to it and it, it kind of brings all the colours together a little bit as well, it makes it look well used, well worn um, and a wee bit sorry for itself which I think is important for a tank in the, the grim dark. You don't want it to be looking like it just rolled off the factory line, you want it to be looking like it's, um, it's earned its stripes. And this one, the Kaylee Marie, uh, certainly has. So um, I used some Vallejo Sandy model texture paste uh, and I mixed it with some brown uh, just to try and get the, the right colour of, of mud. Uh, it's not a, a sun Africa core type uh, mud, it's a sort of wintery uh, mud, so the, the mud I thought would be a bit darker. Uh, and I used just basically an old, uh, an old brush to, to put this on. 
um, heavily on the tracks and uh, underneath. And then I used some uh, rust uh, weathering powder uh, on the exhausts to get to make them look like they've been um, been a while since they've been in a, a garage anyway. Uh, and this is the Kelly Marie finished. So it's the weapons options uh, laid out at the side and uh, just a, a couple extra details. Uh, the customer's wife is a big Patriots uh, American football team uh, fan, so she wanted a, an American football emblem painted on there, so that's freehand. The flag, um, I changed my dad's salt tire for him yesterday um, and cut a tiny little uh, triangle off the, of his old flag that was going in the bin because uh, um, it looks all weather beaten and rough and ready. So I used that on a, a sort of whip aerial at the top, that's what that is. And you'll see me just uh, hot swapping the, the weapons to, to show you how easy it is to actually do this before a game. Um, there's not too much in terms of uh, decals on this, it was quite low key, a, a couple of Imperial Eagles and a serial number. Um, the yellow stripe um, at the front and on, also on the turret uh, indicates the, the regiment of the auxiliary. Um, so I'm, I'm loving the fact that it looks dirty, it looks filthy, it looks like it's been on the line for a long time and, you know, hopefully the, the, the customer's quite happy with this as well. It was an amazing kit to build, um, but the, the, the message I want to give there is, you know, give it a bash. You never know unless you, you give it a bash and um, I did with this one and I quite like the... Um, outputs and uh, hopefully thank you so much for everybody that's been uh, that's been following along um, I feel like you've really come on the journey with me so if there's anything I can do to, to help anyone um, any kind of advice or anything like that please uh, give me a shout I'm only too happy to help um, so thanks very much guys and I can't stress it enough I was lucky to, to have uh, an opportunity to work on this kit it's not something I could have afforded to buy myself so um, thank you very much to the the person Dave who uh, allowed me to film it and share it with you guys so if you would kindly uh, comment like and subscribe we're nearly 800 subs we'd love it to be 800 so thanks very much guys cheers bye bye